Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. The website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, uh, devotionals, uh, and that's also where you go to support this mission. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, we're going to be continuing our study, looking for encouragement and wisdom from the Psalms and the Proverbs. Today we're looking at Psalm 22 and Proverbs 22. Now, Psalm 22 is uh, basically a lamenting uh, from David, but it's also a prophetic psalm. And this particular psalm is prophetic in a very profound way. It describes the, suf the suffering of our Savior, um, the crucifixion, and uh, it's a very, very famous and very prophetic uh, psalm. You know, so little did David know that as he was crying out to God about his suffering, that he was that the figure of speech that he would use. The symbolism that he would use to describe what he's dealing with uh, would be a vivid description of what our Savior went through uh, as he took our sin upon himself. And the worst of it probably being the very first verse uh, and its very, very famous words. Let's just go ahead and uh, begin and uh, go ahead and give this a read and then we'll do a very short commentary reading from Matthew Henry as well. Psalm 22, a Psalm of David. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I am not silent. But thou art holy, O oh thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh, me to scorn, they shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gapped upon me with their mouths as ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the mist of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Hast thee to help me? Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, 
and in the midst of the congregation I will praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him, and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. The kingdom of the Lords, the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nation. All that that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All that they go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. His seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. And that is Psalm 22. And like I said, very vivid. You know, this is David crying out to, to, to God, but also prophesying what would happen to the Messiah. And of course, the very first line is very, very familiar to us all, right? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then he describes the suffering that Messiah went through. Let's just read that portion again because it's a description of exactly what took place. Since many, many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Let's go ahead and, before we move on to the Proverbs here, let's read a... Uh, just a short commentary from Matthew Henry on uh, on what's going on here, at least uh, for the very first part. He says, The Spirit of Christ, which was in the prophets, testifies in this psalm clearly and fully the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. We have a sorrowful complaint of God's withdrawings. This may be applied to any child of God pressed down, overwhelmed with grief and terror. Spiritual desertions are the saints' sorest afflictions. But even their complaint of these burdens is a sign of spiritual life and spiritual sense exercised. To cry out, my God, why am I sick? Why am I poor? Saviors of discontent and worldliness. But, why hast thou forsaken me? Is the language of a heart binding up its happiness in God's favor. I like that line. He's, he's making a point, you know, when we cry out, why am I sick? Why am I poor? These are complaints that deal with the world. But, if you, but when we cry out, why have thou forsaken me? You know, that's the heart of someone whose who's whole happiness is wrapped up in the favor of God. Very powerful. This must be applied to Christ in the first words of this complaint. He poured out his soul before God when he was upon the cross. You remember Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Ele, ele, lam, a sabanathi. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
Being truly man, Christ felt a natural unwillingness to pass through such great sorrows, yet his zeal and love prevailed. Christ declared the holiness of God, his heavenly Father, in his sharpest sufferings. Nay, declared them to be a proof of it, for which he would be continually praised by Israel, more than for all the other deliverances they received. Neither any that hoped in thee were made ashamed of their hope, neither any that sought thee sought thee in vain. Here is a complaint of the contempt and reproach of men. The Savior here spoke of the abject state to which he was reduced. The history of Christ's sufferings and of his birth explains this prophecy. And so there you have it. There's Psalm 22. Much more could be said and studied about that, uh, but we're limited on time. So we're going to move on to the Proverbs. And this is dealing with more wisdom, which is all the Proverbs really are. It's a, it's a, it's a giant book of wisdom. However, um, this particular one deals a little bit with children, you know, uh, the importance of actually disciplining your kids, raising them up in the way you want them to go, um, which seems to be a lost, lost wisdom, a very simple and basic wisdom, but lost wisdom upon this generation. Let's have a look. Proverbs 22, warning and instructions continued. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. You know, I've always thought about that uh, first there, especially when we're talking about the, the times we're living in. When we look at the economic times that we're living in and it's like the wise man, you know, the prudent man, he sees this trouble coming and he's, and he's preparing for it, both physically and spiritually. But the simple... They just go on. They don't care. That No, none of this could ever happen. And the end result, I fear, will not be good. Verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. Which is you know, that very basic financial fact of life. Debt is enslavement. And let it be known that the United States of America has the largest debt. Maybe in the history of humanity. Moving forward, verse 8. And he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that have bountiful eyes shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. The slothful man saith, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. That's a great line about raising children. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, right? It's just natural. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. 
verse 16, He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thy heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withdraw, be fitted in thy lips. They shall withal be fitted to the, in thy lips. That they trust may be in the Lord I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Rob not the poor, because he is poor, neither oppress and afflict in the gate. Neither oppress the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the souls of those that spoiled them. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that surities for debt. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take thee away? Thy, take away thy bed under thee. Again, another verse about it. Look, if you don't have debt, you won't have things getting repossessed, more or less. Verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, and he shall not stand before mean men. Well, there you have it. There's your wisdom and encouragement from the Psalms and the Proverbs to start the week. And I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that it's blessed you. And uh, I pray that this podcast is making a difference in your life. And uh, it certainly is making a difference in mine. And it's a blessing and a privilege to do it. I want to thank you for all the support, especially the support that's come in lately. Uh, great generosity and very humbled by it. And... Uh, uh, because of your support, uh, there's a good chance that in the very near future, next couple of months, we'll probably be able to upgrade our computer equipment. Um, and so I'm very, very grateful for that. And just want to thank you for supporting it. You know, it's a, it's very simple. It's a, it's a podcast um, that we just happen to talk about in time news, and we happen to do a couple Bible studies per week, and it's impacting people. Uh, in a way that I never expected, and I'm very blessed and uh, very excited and very happy about that. Well, there you have it. Peace and grace be with you. And until next time, God bless. <laughs>